most GMAT test takers spend twice the time they ought to on multi-source reasoning, losing points just due to poor timing. In this video, I'll show you a simple mindset shift and a three-minute scanning strategy to beat this one of the trickiest question types of GMAT. Thereafter, we'll take a look at a couple of examples to see how to apply this strategy. Hi everyone, I'm Karishma Bansal. I've been a GMAT expert on GMAT Club for the past 15 years, specializing in all the sections, but particularly fascinated by the logic and patterns of higher level questions. I'm also the founder of ANA Prep, dedicated to helping the serious test taker earn top scores. Today, I'll show you exactly how you can save three to four minutes on MSR questions to gain a performance boost and better control over timing in this section. An MSR question typically has two or three tabs, each packed with text or data tables or visuals. It is tempting to read everything linearly, but much of this data is either redundant or irrelevant. This is not a reading assignment. It is an investigation. You do have a ton of data at your disposal, but from that, you need to extract what you need to answer the question. You have about 2.25 minutes per question in this section, which means a maximum of seven to eight minutes for this three question set. But many test takers spend anywhere from eight to 16 minutes over here, jeopardizing the rest of their test. We have also seen reports of test takers running into two MSR sets making MSR timing absolutely critical. Do you feel overwhelmed by MSR sets? Well, it is normal if you do, because they are meant to overwhelm you. They have those similar terms across sources, subtle shifts in logic, and visually busy layouts. So then, is GMAT trying to test your stamina? No, it is trying to test your ability to prioritize structure over content and to keep your wits about you when facing too much information. The problem of our times is not information scarcity, it is information overload. So in case you are approaching MSR the way you approach reading comprehension or critical reasoning, then that is a very inefficient strategy. So then, what is the solution? In two words, strategic efficiency. So here is your three minute scanning strategy. Do not read linearly observe holistically, and locate useful zones. MSR is like reading comprehension in that it has a lot of extraneous data, but it is also unlike reading comprehension in that you cannot read each tab from top to bottom. Keep in mind, MSR is non-linear. Each tab is a data source. It is not a narrative. It is not a story. So what do we do instead? First, scan the MSR for five to 10 seconds to consider the tab headings. They'll give you an overview of the structure of the MSR as well as its theme. Next, click on each tab to see what kind of data it has, whether it is text or table or list or graph, and relate this back to the tab heading. This mental indexing will cut your retrieval time in half. Then there is a process to go through based on what kind of data each tab has. So we are going to take a look at our couple of examples in which we'll discuss this process. I'll share my screen with you. But before I do that, hit the like button if you're finding this useful. So here we have our first example. Let's consider the tab headings. Overview of the CBEP. I don't know what CBEP is, we'll see. Feedback summary and student testimonials. So something to do with education. Next, we'll focus on the kind of data in each tab. So here we have some text. You know, the heading over here is overview, so that kind of makes sense. All right, why is it important to know what kind of data each tab has? Because sometimes we're tempted to make diagrams to understand the text, while the diagram may already be present in another tab. So type of data in each tab is best to know beforehand. Let's check out our next tab. Here we have a table, the feedback summary. All right, let's go on to the next one. Next is a list of students. I can see names. So basically, most of our evaluation time will be spent on tab one, which has text. Let's go to tab one. Okay, how do we handle text? So we use notational shorthand to capture important points of a long piece of text. So this helps in cross-referencing quickly when we get to a question. So 
you must visualize the story as it unfolds to reduce the need of note taking you know and you must also avoid rereading the intent is not to memorize but to comprehend even comprehension needn't be perfect you know if something seems too complicated so familiarity could be enough as well as long as you have an idea that something like this was discussed in the text you can come back to it for a better look later by that time you would have invested more time in the set and would anyway understand it better so let's dive into this set now the cross bridge exchange program cbep is a bilateral student exchange program between three partner countries canada germany and italy all right so this gives us what cbep is it's an exchange program between three countries so i'm visualizing people going from one country to another you know to and fro so i don't need to write anything yeah next each year students from each country study abroad for one semester in one of the other two countries so each exchange cycle runs from january to may now if i wish then i can note down jan to me objectives a list of objectives of the program is given such as you know increase cultural understanding well fair enough let's move on if we need information on objectives we will come here so reading right now won't help us because we anyway won't remember it in case you have a list given you can read the first point in the list to get an idea of what kind of data is there but then you must move on no point reading the entire thing since you won't remember anyway yeah you will need to come back to it in case a question tests on it next we look at selection criteria so criteria such as gpa is provided here fine again we have a list so if we need some information about selection criteria we will come here for now we'll go on to the next sentence students must also complete a program feedback form at the end of their semester abroad the form includes quantitative and qualitative assessments fine feedback will need to be given look our tab 2 talked about feedback so now it's starting to link up and make sense let's go on to tab 2 feedback summary if you see a table consider the column headings and how they relate to the tab headings and data points in the other tabs the statement that introduces the table is very important too it tells us what information is given in the table that is it sets the context for the table that is this statement over here here is the feedback summary of the 2024 exchange cohort so we have the aggregate feedback of 2024 cohort their countries of origin and destination canada to germany canada to italy all right their feedback score what percent reported academic difficulties then uh, what percent reported cultural adjustment issues so aggregate data or feedback is here got it let's move on to tab 3 Here we see testimonials of students how their experience was that is data of some individuals has been given we can read one to get an idea of what kind of testimonials have been given but that's it not that we'll remember their names and testimonials if we do read them all so why waste our time right now so for example we've been given priya went from italy to canada and she said that professors were accessible but grading was stricter than expected etc all right so now we know what kind of testimonials have been given our 2 minutes are up we go to our questions now we'll not discuss actual questions but we will take some quick examples of what we need to do for typical questions we face in msr okay so for each of the following statements select true if based on the information provided it is true else select false so if false or cannot be determined you are going to select false all right the largest contrast in terms of cultural adjustment challenges was faced by the country pair italian students in germany versus german students in italy we will go to tab 2 because that table gives us the aggregate data and we will compare the country pairs over there let's try it out So Italians in Germany are here and 38% of them reported cultural difficulties and uh, Germans in Italy are here and 61% of them reported cultural difficulties so the difference between them is 23%. Similarly we can find the difference between the other country pairs and get our answer. Let's move on to the next one. Second one. Academic difficulty reported by Italian students in Germany was primarily due to language barriers. Look we have no data for this. specific reasons were mentioned only by a handful of students and can we say primarily due to language barriers well not till a majority of students do not report so so that is why we mark it false and we move on we do not have enough information for this let's go on to the third one 
Some Italian students in Germany reported that academic difficulty was primarily due to language barriers. So here we have some. Some means at least one. So now we must go to tab 3 and check. If there was even one student who went from Italy to Germany and reported that academic difficulty was primarily due to language barriers, then this statement becomes true. Else it is false because we will not have enough data. So then it will not be determined. Yeah? This can be done easily. So we'll just move on and we'll go to the fourth one. A greater number of students from Canada experienced cultural adjustment issues than academic issues regardless of destination. For this, we need to go to tab 2. Let's try it out. Notice that we only have percentages here, but in both groups, those going from Canada to Germany and those going from Canada to Italy, a greater percentage experienced cultural adjustment issues. So overall, more students did experience cultural adjustment issues, no matter what the actual numbers are. So then this must be true. Now the last one. If the program coordinator wants to reduce cultural adjustment issues for future participants traveling to Italy, adding an orientation module focused on cultural expectations and local logistics will help. Alright, so we will go to tab 3 and check. Did anyone complain about cultural expectations and local logistics? If yes, then true. Else, we don't have enough data, so we will select false. Alright, so now, in each of these cases, we extract the data we need when we realize that we need it. This is the main principle of MSR. Alright, let's look at our second example now. Okay, first notice the tab headings as we said before. So here we have challenges and a case study. Well, likely in which some of these challenges were faced. Fine. Now we look at the data in each tab. So here we have text with some kind of a list. Alright. Pure text here, so we will use shorthand and visualization. Fine. Let's look at tab 1 in detail now. So challenges in public health strategy design. Public health agencies must make decisions quickly and often under uncertain or imperfect conditions. The following are common patterns that have been observed in health campaign rollouts. Now this is the background given to us to explain what is given below. Some common patterns observed in health campaign rollouts. Alright, we'll read one of the problems to understand what sort of problems we are discussing but that's it. It's a list. So we will come to it if we need it. Let's look at reactive planning. When decisions are based primarily on the most recent outbreak or media pressure rather than underlying data trends. Alright, so reacting to current situation, not responding with a well thought out plan. Fine. Others would be similar issues, so let's move on. Text. So we'll visualize and make notes in shorthand if needed. Look, if we visualize, then fewer notes are required. We'll just need to maybe jot down those data points. On to the first sentence. In 2023, the Ministry of Health in Virelia introduced a nationwide immunization campaign against the innate respiratory virus. The goal was to vaccinate 75% of the adult population within six months using a mix of mobile clinics and public outreach. All right, so then I'll say 75% population and six months. These are my data points. The campaign's launch was rushed after a localized outbreak in one northern province received intense news coverage, though national infection uh, rates remain low. Alright, so now imagine rush because of some heated media coverage. Fine. Despite early signals that mobile clinics in rural areas were facing logistical hurdles, the ministry chose to maintain the original deployment plan. So logistical issues, but still the ministry just kept on going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meanwhile, officials adopted a public awareness campaign originally used in Madeira, a neighboring country, despite differences in media habits and literacy levels. Issues after issues. They used a neighboring country's campaign even though the neighboring country has a lot of differences with this country. Yeah? All right. The ministry also projected campaign completion within 26 weeks, not accounting for seasonal monsoons or road disruptions that historically affect rural supply chains. After six months, only 59% of the adult population had received the vaccine. So now I can say 59%. And I'm done. 
Let's look at a question. For each of the following common patterns, select present if the information provided clearly indicates that it was present in Varela's immunization rollout, otherwise select not present. So we'll go to tab 1 and read about each challenge given below very carefully. Then we'll check in tab 2 whether it was present in the case study. So let's check for reactive planning. Reactive planning, when decisions are based primarily on the most recent outbreak or media pressure rather than underlying data trends. On to tab 2, recall rush because of media coverage. So exactly this, the campaign's launch was rushed after a localized outbreak in the one northern province received intense news coverage, though national infection remains. So this was present. We'll mark present over here. Next, we need to look for one-size-fits-all messaging. So here is one size fits all messaging. The use of standardized communication materials that fail to resonate with diverse linguistic, cultural or regional populations. Well, there was something about a media campaign. Look, it's right here. Meanwhile, officials adopted a public awareness campaign originally used in Madeira, a neighboring country despite differences in media habits and literacy levels. So this is exactly one size fits all messaging. So we'll mark one size fits all messaging as present and now consider copycat implementation. What is copycat implementation? Right here, adoption of policies used in other cities or countries without fully evaluating whether local conditions are similar. In tab 2, I don't see copycat implementation anywhere. Only messaging was same as that of Madeira, not the policies. So we'll mark this as not present. And with this, we've answered the question. Look, at the end of it, I did not waste time on the common patterns that were not tested. I only invested my time in the patterns that were tested. So then this brings us to our key takeaways. So here are the key takeaways for you from this video. MSR is not about knowing everything. It is about knowing where to look and what to skip. Strategic efficiency means scan the tab headings, scan the data type in each tab, follow the process on different types of data, and use shorthand if required. MSR rewards the test taker who thinks like a strategist. Using a proper approach, you can actually save time, improve your accuracy, and be in control of the test. So here is some quick homework for you. I have put down links to five MSR sets in the video description below. Follow the process and the strategies we've learned in this video on those sets, and let me know what your experience was like in the comments below. Hope you found the video helpful. If so, hit the like button. It's great feedback and it motivates me to create more such videos. If we cross 500, then I'll start working on two-part analysis and table analysis right away on priority. See you.